Yes, sir. Thank you. Your lapel is on. Welcome, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I just want to say that I am honored and humbled to be called as your head elder in this church. This, your mic's muted. Your mic is on. Um, you got me now? No. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. It's not working. Okay, what do you want me to do? Hold the mic? My hand? Let's see here. I'm breathing, buddy. I don't know. It's, something's wrong with the mic. Okay. Sorry about that. It's all right. Just give me a hand to help.
because I was in here doing this. <laughs> but there I was, a little rascal. Anyways, Deuteronomy chapter 10, and let's begin in verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to what? Fear, Fear the, Lord. the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Amen. You know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. As the scripture that we read has said. But God is wrapped <coughs> in history. He showed us things about himself, okay? God is the same. But there's something about him that's always brand new. Think about that. The same, but yet always brand new. God is not like this old person that doesn't move well. God is full of life. He's the giver of life. Yes. This planet spins on its axis because he wills it to do so. Everything holds its place and has its life borrowed from God. Amen. He is to be praised. And I believe he was praised here this morning and he will continue to be praised. I really do believe God has amazing things for this church. In verse 13, it says, To keep the commandments of the Lord in His statutes, which I have commanded thee this day. For what? Your good. For thy good. You know, Deborah started talking a little bit in the Sabbath school class about, you know, the devil likes to make us believe that we're free. You know, go oh, and you can do this and you can be free, but you're not free. You're not free at all. You're bound up. You know, God says, come in here where this protection is. It, it may seem like a prison, but it's where you're free. You understand? It's totally different. How could Paul sit chained up in the bottom of a dungeon and write these words and sing psalms and songs. Do you, what kind of peace do you got to have to be in that situation? I tell you what, wherever God is, that's where you want to be. And if God wants you to be in a prison somewhere, that's where you need to be. That's where you need to be. We need to be, brothers and sisters, in agreement with God. If he's telling us something we don't want to hear, then we got to say, yeah, okay, Lord, show me. I'm walking with you. Only the Lord has a delight in thy fathers to, only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. See, this is what we're focused on. We're focused on the fleshy stuff. God wants to get a hold of our hearts, right? The foreskin of your heart. He wants to change you from within. He wants to make you a living Breathing, walking sanctuary. That's what we were created to be. That is our purpose in life. A house for God. Think about that. Allowing Him to have full control. Could you imagine anything happier or better? Knowing that every step that you make is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Think of the blessing that it was to be Jesus, fully given over to the Holy Spirit. Every meeting he had was ordained. How else could a man speak like Jesus spoke? It is not my time. 
How did he know? He never accessed his Godhead, right? Because if he did, he disqualified himself. What peace and understanding is that? To live that way. And he wants to give us that. He wants to give us that tenfold. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty, and what does it say? Awesome. And a terrible, and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. Why that word terrible? What does that mean? Oh, oh. Yes, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But there's stuff about him we don't know. We know he does everything that he does because he's love. He doesn't have love as an attribute. He is love. The Bible says God is love. So everything that he does is loving and kind and compassionate. Even when he's judging. So many people in this world have, say they don't believe in God because of the suffering that's here. They want to blame God for all the suffering. God did not create this suffering. God created perfection. He said to our great grandmother and grandfather, this is the way walk ye in it. Right? But they chose to do what? Listen to the enemy, the deceiver, the liar. And what did it cause? It caused sin to come on this planet, didn't it? So we're all born with these evil hearts and these evil propensities and desires. And there's only one way to win. Surrender. Surrender. We have got to surrender. Leave it all. Leave it all right here. Because when we get sick and tired of it, as the angels in heaven got sick and tired of it up there, they said, look, they, I mean, they went to Jesus and said, we can't take this anymore. Look at this. What's going on? What's happening here? Jesus said, you're absolutely right. He threw them out of heaven, didn't he? When God's people here get the same attitude as those angels had in heaven, we're not taking this anymore. We can't have this. Lord, help us. Get rid of this. What do you think is going to happen? you think God's going to hesitate? Every decision will be made. Every decision. And we're going to go home? It's that simple. Does God have a right to require of you certain things? We have a saying in this, you know, my house, my rules, right? Yeah. Hello? Is this not all God's house? Can you set your foot someplace that's not God's? What do you have that's really yours that wasn't given to you? Nothing. Why are we so proud? What is it about humans that we think we really got it going on? How is it that we can be so prideful? And I'm speaking to myself, brothers and sisters. I just don't get it. We need to be broken. We need to be broken before God and let Him lift us up. We find our identity in Christ, and then we are completely armored. What can touch you? Nothing. I'm telling you, if God's going to blow the top off this church, and he's going to bring people here like crazy, then we have got to be ready. Because if you think the devil's going to just stand back and lolly, 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 let all that happen without a great big fight, without mics popping down, People not showing up, things breaking down. Somebody's starting to go, oh, you know, Sister So and so didn't smile at me. <laughs> Hello. We got to get rid of the stinking thinking, brothers and sisters. Amen. And we don't have a right to mess with ourselves. Thoughts will come into your mind, get rid of them. Get rid of them, brother. Let them go. You don't have a right to think of yourself that way. You hear me? The Lord loves you. He has died for us. Amen. He, he, what, a, what, a, what a better deal can you get? You give me your sin and I give you my righteousness. Amen. Well, you can find a deal better than that. Amen. There isn't a deal. 
Yes and thank you. Yes and thank you. That's all we can say. That's it. All right, let's let's turn to Micah six eight. Micah six eight. Here it is. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good. Who showed us? Jesus. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. That's freedom. That's real freedom. Listen, if 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 we're going to err, brothers and sisters, we need to err on grace. Okay, grace. <laughs> Don't be the judgment of your brother or your sister. Let us be loving. Let us leave the judging be to God. Let us leave it all to Him. Put it in His court. Isaiah. I'm going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66. These are some of my favorite verses. I'm going to begin in verse 1. Isaiah 66, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? What is he saying here? And where is the place of my rest? Where is God looking to abode? He's not talking about a physical house here. He's talking about you. That's where he wants to be inside you. For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the man that trembleth at God's word. Such a respect and an awe for their heavenly Father that they're not afraid of being destroyed by God, but they don't even want to see the frown of God. That kind of tenderness, that kind of love for your heavenly Father. You think that turns God on? I think so. I think it makes Him happy. He loves us so deeply. He's asking us to just take a look into his eyes and be changed forevermore. Just my, my wife and I just started watching this series. It's not an Adventist series, but it's called Chosen. We're in the episode five, season one, and I am just whew, blown away by the characters and the way this thing is being produced. I think it's I think it's wonderfully done, wonderfully done. And uh, if you haven't got into it, I suggest that you do. It's very easy. You can pull it up on your phone as an app. Okay, chosen is the app on your phone, and it'll, you can it'll tell you you can broadcast it onto your TV, and it'll direct you. If you're not technical, this thing is like idiot proof. It'll just take you all the way there. It'll say, okay, download the Angel app on your Roku or your smart TV. And boom, from your phone, you're on the TV, watching it on the big screen. It's beautiful. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13. It's good to hear this. This here, right here, what we're about to hear, okay? Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not what? Love. Who is love? God is. God is love. I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. Think about the scribes and the Pharisees. What were they? They had all the law, right? And how did they present themselves to the people? Righteous. Righteous. Dignified, right? What did Jesus say? 
He called them vipers. Yeah, Whitewashed, Whitewashed sepulchers. Right? We don't want Jesus to say that about us, do we? No. But why did they become tinkling symbols? They didn't have love. And, and whose love? God. God. Can you be so caught up in the work that you forget who you're working for? Is that possible? It's dangerous to be possible. It's dangerous to sit in a pew every week and just let your heart get harder and put on a show. Become calloused. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Think about it. Do you think there's power in the devil's walk? You think those they have power? I believe they do. But they don't have love. And what does the Bible say that love does? Love conquers all. Casts out all fear. Isn't there great fear in the world today? Fear of the markets, fear of pestilence, fear of being robbed. Fear, yes. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Listen, it's not about intelligence. It's not about education. Because look, at Lucifer was probably more educated than anybody that's ever walked this planet other than Jesus, okay? And where is he? We have, the Bible talks about Solomon. Who was what, the Bible says? The wisest man. The wisest. Did he go down the wrong road? Mm -hmm. In his own words, he said he barely made it back. Right? Barely made it back. And his heart was broken for the people that he led down the wrong path. It would never make it back. What does that speak to? Once saved, always saved. It speaks a lot, doesn't it? Listen, you can give your heart to God back in 1979, but unless you're trusting in Jesus today, you're not in, brothers and sisters. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're not in. Does not behave itself unseemingly. 13 and 5. Seeking not her own, not easily provoked, thinking no evil. Rejoicing not in iniquity, but rejoicing in the truth. The truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. What is the truth? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Love never faileth, but wherever there be prophecies, they shall fail. Wherever there be tongues, they shall cease. Wherever there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part... And we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, the Bible says, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Are we still hanging on to childish things? For, we, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Is love. If we're going to err, brothers and sisters, let us err on the side of grace. Let us not be like the scribes and the Pharisees. Can't go wrong. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Leave it to Jesus. Listen, there, there's a lot of turmoil 
in the world. There's a lot of turmoil in our own family, things that's happened. I mean, I shouldn't talk about this on the mic. With you guys together in the fellowship hall with all the cameras running, that's one thing. But yeah, I'm not going there right now. <laughs> um, first John, let's turn to First John. First John chapter 2, let's begin at verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But what? He that doth the will of God does what? Abides forever. Abideth forever. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 How do we know the will of God? How can we know? To allow Him to have first place. God is not a backseat God. Let us turn to John chapter 16. You must allow Jesus to take the wheel. Because the best is yet to come. John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have what? Peace. peace. What kind of peace are we talking about? Peace that passeth understanding. Amen. Peace that makes people, when you walk by them, just go, oh. You know? When they saw Jesus, what did they say? He speaketh like no man ever spoke. Right? Why is that? Because he had this peace. This peace that he wants to give you. He's more willing to give you this peace, the Bible says, than you are even willing to ask for it. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. That in me ye might have peace, and in the world ye shall have tribulation. Ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is asking us to obey. Obey, if you look it up in your Bible, you look it up in the dictionary, it's a simple word. It means listen intently. Listen intently. That's the right attitude to have with God. Listening intently. Back to Deuteronomy, if we would. Should have told you to keep your finger there. Deuteronomy in chapter 17. Seventeen and verse six. You there to say amen? amen? At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses. Shall he that is worthy of death be put to death? But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. We have people today that want to judge so quickly about things that are happening in the world. This doesn't sound to me like a rush to judgment. This sounds to me like we need to take our time on things, doesn't it? There needs to be investigation. God's good about investigation. You think there's an investigation going on right now? Yeah, I believe so. Because the Bible says when Jesus comes, his reward is with him. Right? I want you to keep that in your mind. Let's turn to Revelation 4. I'm done with Deuteronomy now. Revelation 4. Revelation 4 and 4. 
And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. For sake of time, I want you to jump over to chapter 5 and verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it were as it had been slain.